All right, hello, welcome back to Satisfactory. This is Maker Gaming, and today we're going to look at uh, methods to get finer placement of assets, just for you know fine design purposes. So we'll look at some half meter offsets for vertical and horizontal, and then look at uh, a way to do any offsets and finer offsets than half meters. Uh, we'll look at a few things with beams and pillars and barriers. So yeah, let's get started. All right, so the first one's just a half meter offset. There, there used to be a bunch of different ways to do this. Um, little trickier ways with signs and power poles. But now with the blueprint method, you just press H for any asset you're placing. And you hold control when you're doing your arrows. And that's now your half meter offsets. And that's it. So just to show it off, we'll look at this fluxo method of the, of the one meter walls and do H, control, arrow, place. Now when you do that second set of barriers on their one meter track on this foundation, you can start to see uh, the possibilities of what you can do with the one meter horizontal offset. And if you wanted, I mean, you could fill these slots or we just show on the top actually it's easier like so all right for the half meter we have a couple choices um, let's go down we'll start with the world grid ignore the presence so to get the half meter offset vertically from world grids you could do a two meter foundation and then copy that do a one meter foundation over here and now those are going to be on separate uh, grid levels because the world grid snaps to the middle point of the foundation so the middle point of a two or a four is an even number whereas the middle of a one is a half meter so those are always going to be off and then you would just drag one to the other And wherever you're building now, you can use these as your templates to get the half meter up and the half meter down. All right, another vertical. So there we have our uh, painted beam. And then here we can go off the side of a foundation. And then when you snap to there, one, you get one meter placements down it. And then if you were to do the half meter offset that we did when we laid this, you could even go half meters across from your reference point. Then you turn it, you glide it down, and the one meter increments go there. And that's how you get a perfect half meter. All right, so that's how you would do uh, the half meter vertical. And then just an imprecise method, unless you want to get, you know, your geometry calculator out. But you can go at any angle with a beam and then you can run uh, the placement of a wall anywhere on that beam and so that beam is tracking one meter increments from the starting point so it has nothing to do with the actual height so if you compare it to that side of the wall you can get uh you can get real fine depending on how shallow this angle is that you're doing and then splitting it across you know 10 increments but we don't need that one for now but that's another vertical method. Another vertical offset strategy is using the frame floors. Now the frame floors, I believe in the description, frame floor says it's a half meter tall, but it's actually 0.4 meters tall. So if you look at a one meter foundation compared to two of those, that's 0.8, that's that extra 0.2. So you can use that knowledge to get any point meter uh, if you wanna do that. You delete the frame floor, you put that there, and now you have a, a foundation that's 0.8 meters above the main floor. And similarly here, we'll do another one, delete that, and then this one's 0.4 above the main floor. And 0.4 is walkable, so you could turn staircases, uh, turn this method into staircases. Actually, possibly point, let's see, Yep, even 0.5 is walkable. 
All right, so now looking, we looked at the beam using a diagonal beam to get a different height for a wall, but let's look at when you're doing an angled wall and what, what you can do at the, at the points. All right, so I set up a road using the barrier method just to show off that, um, you know, you do it on one side and it, it matches up perfectly. But then for the other side, you get this crossover wherever the two uh, foundations overlap. But with this, you can take pillar and you want to do it on a two or four meter so that it stays square. Because if you do it on the one meter, it's uh, up like that. So you put that anywhere against the wall and then you hold control, which lets you move this up and down and you want to go halfway through. All right, so now with that concrete laid, you can go there and you can put it anywhere you want. It runs all the way down the line of the pillar. So we'll do it like that and then put this normal one back. Actually, I delete these. And then just the same thing over here. So that's the way you can get the crisp, uh, nice edge between the two and similar to that um, the pillar also has the infinite uh, vertical same thing uh, goes in one meter increments and you can put it any height and then just one last one that's real important this is uh, the barrier method first time I ever saw it was by Fluxo but this is one of the most helpful tips there is in terms of getting angles that aren't right angles. The way you do that is you could set a barrier anywhere on any corner of a foundation. Rotate it in whatever direction you want. You place a second one and then when you put that in, that placement's dead center. And there's a lot of uses for this. Um, I'll have a couple links to videos for circles and hexagons uh, that are made like this. But a common thing is to do a 45 degree angle there. And you gotta do it from both sides. Yeah, and that's how you can start getting a little more uh, creative with your the blueprint. No more square boxes. All right, and I think finally just one last thing about beams that I think is kind of important that I never really realized, but when you place a beam, the first point you do is your zero point. So you can go out, you can go default, which goes in one meter increments in the cardinal directions. You can do diagonal, which kind of goes in more diagonal lines and I think can clip to certain, yeah, to clip to the assets and then freeform, which does whatever. But no matter which one you do, that point is zero. And so everything you're doing that comes off of that is in increments of one coming from that side. Uh, that's just, that's just helpful information when you're uh, getting creative with beams. But yeah, uh, I think that's all of them. Yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for watching. Good luck.